Hello and welcome to Cookie Snack Attack with Seriously Sweet. I'm Amy Hicks. It's so good to have you with us tonight on Mad Scientist Monday. So for those of you who don't know what Mad Scientist Monday is, it's a night that we just do little demos or we experiment with products or we check out things that people in the group have told us about. So tonight we're going to jump right into that. Let's say hello to a few people. Um, I did also want to tell you to make sure that you're in the Cookie Snack Attack group, even if you normally watch us from YouTube. Hey, um, because I dropped a file in there today that is uh, a three-page schedule for you for everything that involves Cookie Snack Attack from yesterday through the end of the year. Okay, so check that out. It'll answer a lot of questions for you. Um, that's not the purpose of tonight's video, but the file is in there. Feel free to message me any questions you might have. I feel pretty confident that the first 30 days of the schedule, the month of September, because this is really four months, right? It's September, October, November, December. I feel reasonably confident that the first 30 days of the schedule are set and will not change. Um, things are already in the works for all of that. And we've purchased things for the, all of the two Tutorial Tuesday things. However, disclaimer, the last three months, um, the schedule will continually being update, updated as guests confirm if they're able to participate in things we have going on or are able to join us for interviews before all the show releases and all of that kind of stuff. So anytime I post an update to the schedule, I will definitely let you guys know and I will remove <clears throat> the previous file and put the new file in place. So you'll just need to print it out each time. It is in a PDF format, so anybody can print it out, but it will only be in the file section of the Cookie Snack Attack group. So good to see you guys tonight. Listen, if you haven't signed up for live stream alerts yet, please do that so that you don't miss any of the bonuses that are coming from now till the end of the year or any of the nights that we're going to have Mad Scientist Monday because it's not going to be every Monday. Um, but I want to make sure that you're getting proper notice for that and for two tutorial Tuesday. So text the word live stream, all capital letters, all one word to 540-870-0726. Follow the prompts. There's usually two. Second one will get some information from you. <clears throat> and uh, we only text between the hours of 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. <clears throat> and I try really hard not to do more than one a day unless it's a class day. And then potentially you could get two. Or if it's two tutorial Tuesday, you get a minimum of two. Okay. But if you want an extra reminder before these classes, <clears throat> that is how you will get one. Okay. We'll send it to you by text alert. So I'm so glad so many of you jumped on tonight because we're going to evaluate a couple of paper crimpers. But before we do that, let's say hello. So Miss Julie is with us, but she has a group. So she'll be watching replay later. Miss Pamela's with us. Hello, hello. Camille. Oh, I'm so glad you're here too. Hey, Mary Jean. And it shows your name tonight, Mary Jean. That means there's been no updates on my side or your side. How fabulous is that? Because it rarely happens, right? Hey, Jenny, how are you? Mimi, it's good that you're here. I'm excited for you to see this. <clears throat> Barbara, how are you doing? And Mimi, thank you for um, bringing the one crimper to our attention. I want to make sure that everyone knows that you brought that to the group as something that we might like. And I think it is going to serve some purposes for us. Hey, Dee Dee, how are you? Hi, Sally. How are you? That's ride or die, Sally. Um, Let's see. Oh, good, Pamela. You got a chance to print it out and you noticed it's all color coded, right? To Tutorial Tuesday is in hot pink and bonuses are blue. Mad Scientist Monday is green and paid classes are in yellow. And by the way, mm, my count was off. I added two classes. So there's a total of eight opportunities for you to take a paid class between now and the end of the year. And I added some more bonuses because there's two chances for you to participate in virtual parties. One for Halloween, we're going to have a virtual get together for group members through Zoom for Halloween on Halloween night. And I have some plans for what we're going to do that night. We'll talk about that later. And then also New Year's Eve party for anybody that wants to get that together um, and join in on that, okay? 
So I'm excited about that. We're going to have some fun events too. Nicole, hey, how are you? Hello, Becky. How are you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. You guys have been traveling. I feel like you guys have been all over the place. Hello, Miss Kelly. How are you tonight? Hey, Debbie, is Whoopi with you? Tell her I said hi. Hello, hello, Teresa. How are you? Hey, Cindy. I'm glad you're feeling better. Hey, Sandra. How are you this evening? Yeah, I know your name shows up. And you just feel so special when your name shows up, don't you? Hey, Grammy and kids. How are you doing tonight? Let's see. Um, let me see what Teresa's question is. Uh, your name is showing. It's showing, Teresa. You're in good shape. Hey, Gabby, how are you? Are you getting so excited for retreat? I can hardly wait. Like, I want to wait because I want... Um, hold on one sec. I'm going to fix this while I'm chatting with you. I want to wait because the retreat is in October. So I'm pretty happy about that because it, we are there at Snowshoe Mountain, West Virginia, during the prime fall leaf viewing week. So I'm super excited about that, but I really just don't want to wait. You know, <laughs> you know how it is. We want to get there and do all the fun things. Hey, Priscilla. Yay. Spooky time. Hey, Lavelle. Yes. Just went live. You haven't missed anything yet, except that I told them the schedule is posted. Hello, Facebook user. How are you this evening? Hello. Hello. Hey, Dawn. Sharon. Hello. Hello to everyone. I know I'm so excited. Oh, <laughs> yes, you should be together doing cookies. Hey, Whoopi, how are you? Hey, April, how are you doing, hon? I know I would go tomorrow, except I'm not quite ready. There's about half of the imprinted items that haven't arrived. I'm not going to feel better till those are in my hot little hands. There's some supplies still en route. Um, and of course, I have to do the final baking before we arrive there. Home in two hours, Priscilla. That's totally cool. All right, so the schedule is a three-page schedule. As I mentioned, there are now a total of eight classes. Six of the classes are the one we talked about extensively last night in a separate video. Um, and those boxes came in today. I ordered them specifically so that I could show them to you so you would see they are really a nice quality box. So it's an inch and a half um, height. So you have plenty of room to put crinkle paper in there. And then they're 12 by 5. So our tall, our upright stacked cookie classes will fit in the box like this. Um, I ordered in the craft and then this is the white box, which matches it around the edge, but it has a little bit of texture to it. So both very nice boxes, very sturdy. These are going to make great gifts. Even if you don't cookie for profit and you don't cookie for volume, you can really do some nice homemade gifts this year. And we're going to teach you how to make the bows. And there's going to be coordinating gift tags that go along with each of those classes. So make sure you watch that video or keep up as the classes get posted. OK, and not only are we going to do a fall florals class on hexagons for those of you who really like the whole florals theme that we've been doing this year in each season. Um, I did find a day to work in the Christmas one. There is a really pretty Christmas floral set that um, I sketched several months ago. Actually, I think I sketched it all the way back when we went to the first unplugged retreat, if you can believe that. So anyway, um, I thought I was going to have to set it to the side in exchange for the projects that are going to help you guys make money. Um, these will also help you make money but they're a totally different kind of cookie. They're more for like platter cookies and big parties and stuff. <clears throat> so you may or may not use all of the designs that are in there, but anyway, they're so pretty. And I was like, I have to find a weekend to do these. And that way there'll be a little bit of something for everyone going into the, the holidays. Okay. So I added another one. <laughs> I had to be extra. <laughs> hey, Sally O.L., how are you? That's sweet Sally from Florida. Thank you for checking in with us. That is exciting. Okay, so tonight we're going to evaluate some paper crimpers. And the specific reason, now I'm going to be very clear that we are at video minute 12 minutes and 24 seconds. So 12 minutes, 24 seconds. Can someone type that in the comments for me? Because if I get any... What's the nicest way to say this? If I get any negative messages with regard to my 
personal comments about the products I'm about to evaluate, I'm going to refer you to minute 1223. Because what I'm going to say is, I ordered these in to evaluate them for a very specific project and purpose over the next couple of months. And, and I'm sorry to say that it turns out I don't think that they're going to work for that particular project, which was the Christmas cupcakes and potentially making the imprinted parchment so that we didn't have to fold it. I unfortunately believe that the two <clears throat> that I ordered in are not going to work well for that. However, the thing they are going to work really well for. <coughs> hey, babe, would, would you mind bringing me my inhaler off the um, table in there? The thing that they are going to work really well for is doing your own paper selection for crinkle paper for the background in your boxes. So if you combine these hand done crimpers with cardstock, whatever cardstock you want to use or scrapbook paper, whatever you have handy and uh, combine it with a, a mini shredder, then, <clears throat> okay, guys, I need you to hold on just one second. Okay. I'm sorry. Hold on one second. I found one. Hold on just a second, guys. I found one, babe. I am so sorry, guys. Occasionally, my asthma kicks in. <clears throat> so to finish my comment, whew, I can't stand that feeling when my chest gets tight, like it's, it's not good. <laughs> hey, Charlotte, how are you? So to finish my thoughts on that, what I ordered them in for that I thought they would work really great for, or we were at least going to see if they were going to work great for that. Um, they're not as deep. They don't make as deep and as triangular of a look as what I prefer for my cupcakes. They might be fine for you guys, but I do want to say this. They're both very well made. Um, there was a third one that I considered ordering, but it was 30 bucks. And these were like 12 and 10. And this, if you have a cookie friend nearby, you get two of the same crimper. And this, this is what it does is those kind of lines. So what I thought it would do, it's not going to do, but turns out it's going to be really great if you combine it with a low cost shredder to make your own shredded paper for your cookie packaging this year. Okay. All right. So um, even though it is not going to work the way that I wanted it to work, I'm glad we got them and I'm glad we tested them because I think they're going to be great for something else that we, anybody that's taking classes for the stacked cookies for this year for gift sets. Um, <clears throat> I think they're going to be great for that. And I also discovered this, which I did not know. Oh, oh and by the way, guys, if you have a second, um, Share the share the live stream so we can see how many people we can get on on a Monday night. Because if there's a lot of people available on Monday, because I don't think there's a lot of people doing tutorials on Monday, Monday night will end up being a good night to keep the Mad Scientist night on and potentially might be a good night to have our guests on so that the guests are on a separate night than two tutorial Tuesday, okay? So if you could share the post, let's see how many people we can get here with us this evening. All right. So when this is the larger one and it came in packaging just like this, I want to say it was like $12. I'm definitely going to list it 
in my Amazon shop tonight because I do like the quality. I like the feel of it. I like how um, <clears throat> I like how it worked. Like it's super easy. And you guys, these are a great alternative. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. But they're a great alternative for people that don't want to invest in the embossing machines. Like if you just want to try it out, right? <clears throat> that um, this is a good way to see if you even like doing the parchment texture sheets because it did emboss the parchment very nicely. So it's going to be a great alternative if you don't want to do the machines, if you just want to test to see if you like doing that, that textured background. And it's going to be very good for a couple of things really specific. Um, but let's take this off. One of the, I didn't know this when I ordered it because I went by the link um, that Mimi gave me. And look what's on the back. This is so cool, I think. They actually have five different ones. They're separate. I think you'll be happy to purchase separate ones because the ones where you actually change out the rollers but use the same body of the handheld crimper, they have absolutely horrible reviews. So before you purchase any of these, please read the reviews. Both of these, I think, were above 3.8. And when I read the reviews, some of them were just like, they were piddly complaints. They weren't something I considered a real complaint to where I wouldn't order it, right? But the other one, the $30 one that looked like it would make more angular <clears throat> cuts like this, you know, like the triangular looking stuff, that one had absolutely terrible reviews. And it's one of the ones where you change out the roller. So I'm just, um, I'm not going to spend $30 on it to test it, but I'm happy with these. Okay, so let's go look at this. You can actually, on Amazon, you can get this bubble pattern. Let me pull this in. Let me do it this way, and then maybe it'll oh, go. There you go. Look. <clears throat> so you can get this bubble pattern. Um, we're doing the straight, and I thought the straight was the one that would be real angular, but it's more curved. So it does actually look like the edging on mini cupcake liners, you know, they're more rounded. Whereas my big cupcake liners, cause I make monster cupcakes, they're very angular. So I always fold my parchment to be really angular. <clears throat> so it might be okay. You might like it. It might be a little more feminine look to it and just a little more girly for certain things. Definitely gonna be good for baby shower cupcakes and stuff like that. And look at this beautiful heart one. Right. So you could be on the embossed parchment bandwagon for about 15 bucks and about seven bucks for a box of parchment if you want to try it out before you invest in a machine. OK, so the heart. Then there's one with a diamond pattern, which this <clears throat> when you blow this picture up, it looks like it would be fabulous to create a fishnet background, you know, turning it a different way. It looks like it would be great for that, for like summertime cookies. And then look at the wave. Isn't that wave cool? It's really neat. And I thought immediately when I saw that wave, um, that the parchment turned the right way, would it would make great wavy hair. And then you could do a 3D face on top and then put some sculpted hair over top of that. But you can make your background with this, right? Because you don't have to put a whole piece of parchment on. You can pull it apart, okay? So there's all these. There's five in total available from this company, okay? All right, now I'm going to demo both of these, and I'm going to show you some different parchment papers just so you feel comfortable in case you do want to order these. And I will need you to give me about an hour after we end our mad scientist experiment to post these in Amazon. Um, and also, if you have a cookie friend near you, don't both of you buy this because you get two in the set for like 10 bucks. You can just share these. Like give, you know, I have friends that we, when we have to get two of something, we already know we're going to swap. And then the next time they send me something, stuff like that, you know? All right, so... Now, Zenloji is one of my favorite parchments. It's unbleached parchment squares. And I think I told you before that I like to get it in the four inch squares because there's a certain, um, you know, really the hexagon cookies, I don't ever make them bigger than four inches. So if I want to texture a bunch of hexagon cookies, this is a great size. 
And then the five by five doesn't fit all, all of my embossing folders. So I have some because I use it for other things. Um, this one I like to cut so that, well, both of them cut well because you get two inch squares or two and a half inch squares. But this one I, is the one I like to cut for putting on my flower nail. Do you guys all know what a flower nail is when you're making florals? This little deal. So I usually put a drop of icing, then one of the little squares. But to order the squares already cut, it's kind of pricey. So I, I just make my own out of this or a bulk roll of parchment. <clears throat> okay, here we go. And then this is another brand that I ordered in recently. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like in the bigger one, because these are too big for the little the little machine. But this is natural, unbleached, nonstick, but it's Baker Signature. Truthfully... I can't tell a difference in the thickness, um, but it does, <clears throat> it does feel like it has a coating. So I'm going to pull those big ones out. Like this one doesn't feel coated, although it doesn't say it's not coated anywhere on this packaging. It just, um, it says non-toxic grease proof on the little one. This one, the Baker's Mark, this feels like it has a little bit of a coating to it. They just... Thickness wise feel the same paper looks to be the same quality, but this looks like it actually has a coating um, and I'll pull out a five by five from here too. the other thing I wanted to tell you is guys, um, it makes a better imprint, very similar to if you have like the spellbinders machine like I have or the Sizzix. It makes a better impression if you put more than one sheet through at a time. So I found five was really good. You could do up to 10. 10 worked great, but I don't need 10 pieces of this. So I tested up to 10 so that I could tell you that worked really well in this. But um, if you only want to test out a small amount of these, five, five gives you a nice imprint for this. Okay. So, and here's the other thing. If you're right-handed, you'll appreciate what I'm about to tell you. Let me pull a couple more of these out. So if you're right-handed potentially you will like to turn clockwise. I, I guess we're just kind of wired that way. Okay. I don't know. Maybe you guys like to turn counterclockwise, but clockwise is my thing. I'm going to pull some of the Zenlogy out too. And so I can show you exactly the difference since we're evaluating tonight. Okay. Um, did I put everything back together so I don't lose anything? I've been doing such a good job of keeping my workspace organized that I can hardly recognize it on most mornings, which by the way, my little fur balls talking about, you now, girls, they have been getting up at three 30 in the morning. Yes, that's right. Three 30 Eastern time. The sun isn't even up yet. And then I managed to take them out and then I get them back in bed and then they are up at five o'clock and there's no going back to bed. I mean, I don't know how these dogs can act like children and that school has started and they're excited, but it must be all the noises in my neighborhood and they're rattled, but I can't take many more three o'clock mornings. Right, girls? We discussed it today and I kept them up all day. No naps, no naps because they, they've had me up since early, early this morning. All right. So back to the handle turning for the evaluation here. This is a clockwise turning motion. So this one is a counterclockwise. Well, I guess you can do it both ways. Yeah, wait a minute. One of these only went one way. Oh, well, I guess I got them both working now. Never mind. They're both clockwise. Earlier, I was using this one and it wouldn't go forward. It would only go back. So maybe I got it loosened up. So if you get yours and it only goes backwards, just run some paper through it counterclockwise and then go again the other direction. Like I literally couldn't get it unfrozen and I didn't think to try the second one, but this one's working great. Okay, well, there you go. Another testing. Let's do the big one first, okay? You guys up for that? So you can see what, oops, sorry. I hope that didn't make a loud noise in your ear. All right, so you basically just set it in between the two rollers. Can you guys see this? You want me to get in closer? The only danger with getting in closer is that somebody's gonna say, I can't see. So do you see the rollers? Let me roll it. Take a good look. Do you see where the rollers are connecting? Okay, now I'm going to back out because I want you to see what I'm actually doing so it's valuable to you, okay? So you just set this in, and then what I did was I held my thumb underneath to brace it up so it would catch, 
and then I started rolling. It caught the paper immediately. And look, it actually looks like corrugated cardboard when it comes through, but it's very rounded, right? So when we fold our parchment, we have those sharp edges. When we did our cupcake last week, um, you know, I did it with the larger and the, the larger folds and the sharp edges. And I kind of really like that look, but this would also be okay because this looks like the edges of a mini cupcake liner. So I think you'd be okay with this too. Okay. But look what a good job it did on every single sheet. So if you want to get in the parchment embossed paper game, this will be a good starter. Now I showed this to someone earlier today. We were chatting about it. This I think would be great for creating, um, if you use it upright, it would be great, great for creating the lower part of a room background, like beadboard. If you have beach house or ocean things you're doing, I think it would be great like this to be like the, um, the boards on a beach house, whether you could use it to make weathered boards on a beach house. I think if you give it a little bit more folding, just a little more creasing, you could definitely use it for cupcake. You could use it also in pieces just to create um, movement on a, co a cookie. Like you take little pieces and let it let it be right, going right, like um, lower to upper north north. Let's say northeast. Let's do let's do um, directions. So you could let one be going northeast, and then you could come over here and do one that's going southeast so you could get movement on your cookie with this parchment paper just for some diversity right there's something like that so i do like it it's just not as deep a cut as i thought it was going to be now i do want to say um i do think if you put a couple pieces of card stock together like i didn't test all the card stock with um weights yet but a couple pieces of cardstock together and then running that through um, a paper shredder. I think you're really going to like that if you want to make your own paper shred for specialty boxes and stuff this year. And you could get started on that right away because it does give you a nice little crinkle. It's not that deep V, okay, but it gives you a nice crinkle. All right. Now I want to show you this other big one on this machine because it's a different brand of the parchment. So again, I'm just going to Hold it. I'm going to hold my thumb up to balance it so it doesn't slide out. And I'm going to just put it between the two rollers and I'm going to start rolling. All right. Now, this is the one. Remember, I said the baker's mark and it feels more coated just so you can see them side by side. The imprint is exactly the same. I think in my experience using my spell binders to emboss parchment sheets, I think this released from my cookie easier, but they both worked. I hope that makes sense. They both worked, both brands of parchment paper. So I think you'd be good with either one of these. And I probably have these already in the paper goods section on my Amazon shop. And Mimi, if you're here, will you drop the link in for April for the Amazon shop? <clears throat> Mm, cookie liquid that oh yeah it's in the shop and it's under okay so let me let me look, check some comments real quick okay just to make sure i didn't miss any questions let's see what's going on up here um okay my crimper by the brand that starts with an f didn't work with my parchment paper so mimi mimi is that the 30 dollar one that i said i probably wasn't going to get because the rollers changed out so it's good to know it didn't work with parchment paper. <clears throat> um, <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> hey, Allison, how are you? Um, <laughs> oh, no. You were almost done, too, Allison. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, you like it for snakeskin? Which one did you like? Are you talking about this, Kelly? I'm sorry. I didn't see this comment till just now. This for snakeskin? This one? Or this one? The diamonds or the waves? See, it does a really, these are really inexpensive, you guys. 
if you want to get on the parchment textured background bandwagon, like really inexpensive to test it out. But listen, I don't want to get in trouble with all of you because as soon as you do test this out, you're going to see how cool this makes the cookies look and have so much fun with the texture that you're then going to buy a machine. And don't get mad at me when you buy a machine, just ask somebody for it for Christmas or your birthday or an anniversary. Okay. Cause you're going to want a machine. It's just going to happen. It's going to be inevitable. All right, hold on. Let's see what else is coming. Like I'm just giving you the big enabler alert. It just happened. If you spend this, the $13 or $12.99 or whatever it was, and then a pack of the parchment paper and try this stuff out and you see what it can do, you're going to want the other bigger machine. Okay. I know it. I know it's coming. <laughs> All right, Priscilla. Yes, a tin roof for sure. Corrugated tin, absolutely. Absolutely looks like that. Um, I didn't try it with wafer paper, Kelly, but I have some here if you want me to try it. I suspect that it might crack the wafer paper, but we'll try it in just a minute, okay? Um, April, we're going to get somebody to get the link in the comments on the Facebook page for you. And then go, because the um, Becky is doing, Becky Norton, that's a group member, is going to be doing um, a presentation on the evening of Tuesday, September 27th on preserving cookies and the resin that she buys for that, which is listed in my Amazon store underneath um, Becky's supply list is on sale 50% off. So you should grab that today. <clears throat> uh, you know what, Mary Jean? I did not even think about that. What a great idea. Hold on. Let's do it. Let's do it. So I'm going to turn it the other way. Let's see what kind of pattern we get. Let's see what happens. I might not have run enough sheet. Oh, you know what? Nope. It just crimps it and erases the other. Well, I mean, it's kind of there, but it's not there enough that it's going to show up. Let me show you what I'm talking about lay it down here so you guys can really see it so it, it just recrimps it i guess it's not strong enough in the parchment paper you know to make it two ways because it's so much pressure going through there that's a great idea though mm, that would have been pretty mary jean great idea great idea um let's see let's see what this is uh yeah didn't work charlotte that was a great idea though you guys thousand i'm sorry i'm sorry because i know that you want that done it's like every time she tries to get her whole yard done something happens the diamonds yes i think that would be great for snakeskin um it works better the slower okay let's try that mimi let's see what happens i don't have any trouble getting this one to crimp i just my only thing i like it i like the weight of the machine it's easy to use it's just that it does not um it does not give me a deep V. That's the, really the only thing I would say. All right, so it looks about the same. It really does. It's not, it's not really a lot thicker, but this is more parchment paper through there. And it, you can see it did more than five sheets really well. Okay, now we gotta break out some more parchment paper. Hold on. We're gonna be doing metal roofs shortly. <laughs> um, I don't think the Cricut does embossing, Lavelle. I think it just cuts. Uh, April, you're welcome. Mimi's got the link there for you. So you'll have to grab that from the Facebook page though. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll have to do, you'll have to come back over. I know it is a bummer, right? Wouldn't that have been cool? It would have been so neat, but you can get that pattern, that dime, that crisscross pattern in an embossing folder for sure, because I have one. All right. Let me find my wafer paper. You guys know I got all organized and added another set of shelf shelves small shelves on a cart behind me now we're gonna try two do you guys are do you have time you guys okay to try two of these let's do um in my wafer paper i always grab it from icing images so if anybody needs any um let's see i'm just gonna break off a small piece this is my a which is the is this a yep yeah, this is a4 okay um, hold on just a sec. And okay, so I have A and I have double D. Let me crack off a small piece of this. 
and let's see what happens. Hold on. Also, I keep my wafer paper, once it's open, I keep it sealed in an airtight Ziploc. Usually it's in two, but I had to split the bags. All right, so we're going to go in the little machine though, okay? We'll start in the little one because you guys haven't seen that yet. Oh, let's do the parchment first. You can't be like all crazy distracting me. All right. Do like five of these little guys so you can see it. Now I did find this one because it's smaller. I found it, um, I found it more difficult to turn, but I kind of like the pattern a little better. Oh, that's what it was, you guys. Yes, you have to roll this one counterclockwise. It's not that it won't go the other way, it's that it won't pull the paper down the other way. That's what it was. So this one is a counterclockwise turn. All right, so we'll compare these so you can see it. All right, look, this is a finer. This one's more rolly rounded edges, the first one we did, and this one is finer. Can you see that? Let me lay it down and zoom in with the nice camera. Can you see the difference? So this is like half the size of this one. So they, I think they're both going to be really great and have good usage. Um, but this, this one, when it rolls this way, it's pushing the paper out. So this one is a counterclockwise. I thought it was that I couldn't get the roller moving, but now I remember it was, it's sucking the paper and it wouldn't do it. Okay. So this one's finer. Now let's go try your trick, you guys, and turn this one the other way and see what happens. Let's see if we get any hash marks on this. Hey, two T's, Tammy, are you here tonight? Possibly watching? Are you on? Oh, I did the same thing, you guys. I suspected it would. Like, you can see it's been embossed the other way, but it doesn't make a deep enough imprint that I think it would show up. We're going to test it, though. We should always test it after we go through all this trouble. But if it does show up, it's going to look like gingham print. All right, and don't forget to go back and watch the video that I did, I don't know, maybe four or five months ago now, where I taught you the trick about using icing your sheets first and using your um, your thingamajini to pull your icing around before you put this down on the cookie. And that'll help you with uh, eliminating spaces and air bubbles. Don't forget to go back and watch that video. That's super helpful information um, as you guys work on these kind of projects with textured parchment. And there is some textured parchment stuff coming up for Christmas. So Kelly, it would be great if it shows up like that because it does. It does look like um, burlap. So we'll see what happens. But if you have the machine, there is a burlap folder. I feel like this is going to be, for parchment people, it's a good tester. And then you're going to upgrade to the embossing folders and the uh, nicer machine. I feel like that's what's going to happen. And then you're going to be like, um, Amy, <laughs> please don't tell me about anything else right now. Um, but for making your own paper using cardstock to make your own crinkled paper. Okay, this is the A, you guys, in wafer paper. Let's see what it does. And I'm going slower because Mimi said hers did a little better when it was slower. But I'm only doing one piece of paper because wafer paper is a little more brittle. <gasps> Look, it did a good job on the wafer paper. It didn't break it. And that looks pretty also would be good if you needed to do some 3d pieces to make a roof that sticks out or something on a cookie wouldn't that be cute yeah for a sweater pattern mary jean totally i could see that too all right let's try the thick wafer paper this is always the one that you think when you're using it to um do projects you think oh thicker is going to be better this just falls into that whole category of not always okay like, for instance, when I did my hot air balloon, the A paper worked much better. Or, oh, I can feel it. I don't know if it's cracking or not. Nothing's falling out in loose pieces, but I can I can tell I'm rolling a thicker wafer paper for sure. Oh, yeah, it's cracking it, you guys. Hold on, I'm going to tear that off instead of wasting it. That stuff's expensive. Look, so it cracks it. This actually would look good for a rustic roof. <laughs> But let me let me zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. 
but it definitely, it cracked the thick wafer paper. But at least you know what it looks like. In the ridges, it's really cracked. Can you be only partially cracked? Probably not. A crack's a crack, right? <laughs> but anyway, um, it's definitely, it's very, this is, you know, look, look, it's splitting basically. Um, but it is really cool in here. I just had a thought about something else I want to try, but I don't have the supplies here. So we'll have to do it another night. All right. So quickly, you guys tell me if there's anything else that you want me to test on this or this or a different way you want me to turn it anything like that now and remember if you're going to make your own shredded paper if you don't want to cut all those little strips by hand there are some like 20 dollars electric paper shredders online that are like little tiny tabletop ones that would be plenty for what you guys are going to be coming up against um and then you can use up some extra stuff here let's see which video it's it's in the um it's go to YouTube, Camille, and go back through those videos. It's in there. We did it like four or five months ago. Um, you like it on the wafer paper. What would you use it for, Kelly? Now that you've seen it, what were you thinking wafer paper would be good for? Um, I don't. I think on the thinner one, I'm actually shocked, Mimi, that it didn't crack the thinner one as well. But this is like relatively new wafer paper. But I do really like, I like how it looks. And immediately I thought of something that I could use it for on a Christmas cookie when I saw this. So I'm not saying that's not coming. If you have these, don't give them away. Um, what if you treated the paper with paper potion, let it dry? I don't know. We could try it, Mary Jean, the thick paper. We could try it. But I listen, I'm just telling you, there's no way to take this apart and clean it. Um, so my suggestion for prepping this for food use would to be get some thick paper towels, no more than two, wet them, wring them out, and then run them through here just to make sure your stuff is clean. I definitely would not try to use this with gum paste or fondant. They're way too close together. Um, and I just don't know how you would get this thing clean if you get it all gummed up. So I'm going to leave that totally to you guys. I'm not even going to try that on mine because I want to use mine for paper. Okay. But. Maybe. And I do have paper potion here, but I'm not sure I'm going to test that. How <laughs> you guys all want to test it. <laughs> okay, wait, maybe I could test it, but not tonight because I'd want it to be totally dry because I have two of these little handheld deals. So if it gummed one up, I wouldn't be, um, I wouldn't be destroyed. I'd still have one, right? 3D elements. Yeah. And I think it'd be so cool, like on the cookies for beadboard and on beach cookies. I think it would be really neat because it's going to take airbrush really well too, right? Then you'll get some really cool like dimension on here. All right. So talk to me, please. And let me know. Um, let me know over on the side who already, if you could tell me who already has these. And um, um it, tell me if you already have these little handheld deals and which ones you have over on the side. Um, I have a spell binders, both the large platinum and the baby platinum. And I love it. And I have tons. Um, yes, Mimi. Oh my gosh. So, okay. So for sure, I'm going to order this one. I meant to say this. I'm for sure. I'm going to order this with the hearts. Cause I think that would be really fun. Um, for Valentine's Day, but good point. You can emboss it and then run it through one of your um, your punches, and then you'd have textured on that too. How fun would that be? And can you imagine, actually, Mimi? Can you imagine the flowers that you could do if you run this through first and then punch this out on like a five petal flower punch? That would be gorgeous, and it would have that total like burlap natural look. Um, that would be so pretty and it would be great to add to your Royal Icing Transfer gift tags if you had flowers. I had, I did have a lot of fun with this one, by the way. I did. Okay, so Mimi, um, Nancy and Nancy's group and the Colorful Cookie, she has some great, I know you're a member over there. She has some great videos when she first introduced the embossed parchment paper method and she tried it on a ton of different machines with a whole bunch of different parchment papers. Debbie, yours is on the way. <clears throat> Sorry to talk. <laughs> so, um, 
anyway, I think, oh, and they did send cardstock, but I didn't want to put unedible paper through the machine before we did our test, right? But I will be <clears throat> keeping one of these. I'd like to keep one of these to use for the crinkle paper because I like how small this one did it. I like that. Um, and then this I'll probably keep to use with food so that I don't have to worry about sanitizing in between. Okay, so let me show you this real quick. These two little dudes, the little ones came in this box and this is definitely, this is definitely on my Amazon shop. Okay. But just to get you a good look of this, this was two in the package. There was no problem with shipping. They came in just a couple of days um, and no damage. They were well packed, so you don't have to worry about that. This one also came well packed. It was in bubble wrap. It was in its holder like this. And I'm definitely going to be getting, just me personally, I'm definitely going to be getting this heart one. And I'm really thinking about getting either the diamond or the wave just to have those ready to go. Because this is a lot quicker to just grab this and run off a couple sheets of parchment than it is to break out my whole machine if I only need a few, okay? Um, now, paper potion. I'll do the paper potion test. I'll do it tomorrow when I'm going to be in here. That way I can watch it and see how long it takes both thicknesses of wafer paper to dry. I'll do the paper potion test and post the results, but I won't do a video, okay? Because we got to stay on track in order to get everything done for all these classes. Now, if you jumped on late on in the Amazon shop, if you're going to be doing the six stacked classes um, to go ahead and do pre-orders and early cookie sales and stuff. Sorry, I hope I, I should have warned you. I was about to move the camera. I hope I didn't make anybody sick. Um, I got the boxes in that I linked on the shop. I actually ordered a set in so I could make sure they were as good a quality as what I normally use. And these are nice. They're about a buck a piece and they come in different quantities. So go through the entire listing on my Amazon shop before you order 50 of them. You know, if you just want to test it, get a small pack like six or 12, but both boxes, they're the, um, they're one piece boxes, really easy really, really easy. Now I did have a question right before we went live. Um, could I tag some bags, some clear cello bags that can be used with the heat sealers that we all have? Um, since I, myself and Allison are pretty much the only ones who know what size the cutters are for each of the cookies in the stack cookie sets, right? So I will try to do that for you sometime this week, but if I can't get to it this week, cause I have a lot on the schedule, then it, that info will definitely be in each of the individual groups. So the first group is the spooky Halloween stacked one where it's like a wine barrel with a fall pumpkin and a skull comes out of that and then ghosts fly out of that. So that's our first class. So in that group, when that class group goes up, um, that group will have a recommended size packaging to order. And then I will do that for the other groups as we go too. <clears throat> schedule is posted in cookie snack attack. Take a look at that. I added one more class. I added um, the Christmas florals on hexagons. Can't wait for you to see it. I hope you guys want to take that one too, because it's super pretty and um, two parties. I think we didn't do enough partying this year, enough virtual parties. So I, if possible, if you're not going to be anywhere on October 31st, on Monday, October 31st, I'm working on a surprise for the group, um, but we'll see if that works out or not. But even if it doesn't work out, I want to have a, a virtual fall Halloween party with all of you guys that night through Zoom. OK, so um, there will be we'll have up to 50 people in it. So you will have to sign up because it'll close after 50 people because I don't think we can run more than that in Zoom currently. OK, and then New Year's Eve, if you aren't going to be anywhere, um, We'll have a little New Year's Eve party on Saturday, December 31st. We'll have a little cookie party that night, okay? With prizes, of course, and giveaways and maybe some special guests. Like, we're going to just be together in all different areas of the country or the world, really, and um, have some fun. We can ring in the new year together. Hopefully, one of the things I want to do is have Doe Dude decorate cookies. I want to see if I can get him to come on and decorate cookies in one of those parties. 
Um, so we'll see. I don't know. I haven't asked him yet, but we're going to try. So maybe think about doing a joint event with your husband that night and see if he'll decorate cookies with you. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Um, smart sheets. Ooh, Mimi. Yeah. Let me know if it does work with smart sheets. I have some here. If, if you need more. <clears throat> hey, Maggie, how are you? Laura, do you still have it? It actually works really good if you want to make your own crinkle paper. I'm going to use up a whole bunch of remnant scrapbooking paper this year. Seasonal remnant scrapbooking paper from when I used to do a lot of scrapbooking. I'm going to use that up and make my own crinkle this year. So my crinkle is themed. All right, let's see. Um, <clears throat> thank you. All right, you guys. Well, I'm going to jump off. Anybody have any other questions? Otherwise, let me look at the schedule and see when I'm going to see you again. Hold on. Let's see. Feels a little maddening to have gotten this done. So I'm going to see you tomorrow at noon and 7 p.m. Eastern time for two tutorial Tuesday. And we're going to be doing cupcake two of 12 of the series of mini cupcakes for Christmas. And this one is called Woodsy. Okay, this is our Woodsy. Now, don't forget, if you haven't signed up for live stream alerts, text alerting for the live streams, type the word live stream, all capital letters, all one word, and send it to the phone number 540-870-0726. Um, and we will send you text alerts before we go live. And tomorrow I'll be on at noon and seven if all goes well. And let's see what's happening over here. I see com comments are rolling up really quick. Let me just see. Oh, I'm glad you liked it, Kelly. Mimi, thank you, hon. Thank you so much for sharing that crimper because I have never seen that before. And uh, I think it's really going to help all of us to improve our packaging game at Christmas time, Thanksgiving and Christmas and holidays. Night, Camille, and I'll try to find that video for you either tonight or tomorrow and tag you in it, okay? But it'll be on YouTube. I think you normally watch from YouTube, so I think we'll be okay, but I'll try to find it. Uh, I hope Jason was not bothered by listening to an hour of this cookie snack attack. <laughs> and hopefully you're home soon. All right, you guys have a great night. Thank you for tuning in for Mad Scientist Monday. Um, I did want to tell you, I found some new products. I ordered them in. They're from Sinful Cutters. And I think that's going to be a super interesting demo. And then 61 new sugar art colors arrived. So we'll just be breaking those down. And on a night that we don't have a specific new product to try on Mad Scientist Monday, I'll just try to work like five to seven in each week until we get through all of those, but they're beautiful. So I think I now am set. I was pretty good shape on my elite colors before and pretty good, pretty good. I've got all the diamond dust, of course, but I was very weak on elite dust and on sterling pearls. And I think I now have us covered on that. I'm going to be testing on my own I don't want to do 61 of those in a video, though. It could end up being four hours long. But I am going to test them all on my own because I am trying to get you a, for people that are going to do a lot of the classes, I'm trying to get you a list of things to order so you only have to order once, okay? All right, you guys, have a fabulous night. Thank you for tuning in. Appreciate you guys so much. And let's just make sure you're very welcome. All right. Night, Teresa. Night, Miss Pamela. Good night, everybody. Have a good evening and we will see you tomorrow for our woodsy themed mini cupcake, which is two of 12 of the holiday Christmas cupcake series. Bye, guys. <laughs>